What? Oh, oh yeah! The military! Oh, yes! Over here! Over here! Oh, yes! Just save me! I'm the only one that survived! Everyone else is dead! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, I tell ya! Oh, man! You guys are a sight for sore eyes! Uh, you know, I always support the troops. That's number one. And number two, I bleed red, white, and blue. <laughs> been told, but Americans should fit a mold. There's a war to be fought in this country against those that are far too bold. Two-party system left and right, there's only room for right and wrong. It's you and me and me, you, the loudest become the strong. Yeah, we're great again. You have two choices. Abandon your God or burn here with him. No, 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 Nine, seven, five, three, two. What if tomorrow? Outside the vaulted door, Lucy cradles the wounded Ted. His blood leaks onto the black and white tiled floor. Oh, Conco, or is it Ted? Oh, please, let me die. That is Conco. I want to thank you, Lucy. You made me the ape man. I never thought I could be. We'll get you out of here. You'll be all right, please. Please don't die. I love you, Kong. With the last of his strength, Ted reaches up a shivering hand and touches her face. His eyes roll back, his hand falls, he goes limp in her arms, dead. Lucy holds him and weeps. <laughs> Teddy watches as another image of himself steps into view. This mustached Ted answers, I think I'm not gonna let you fuck this up. Teddy blinks at his double stupidly. <laughs> Whoa, I am way too drunk. <laughs> the older Ted grabs his younger self and holds an ether-soaked cloth to his mouth. The college boy's eyes go wide, then roll back. Stand aside, little boy. Let the Casanova of Coven Communications research and power take it from here. But I can't be stuck here! You're not stuck here, teddy bear. You're stuck in here. Pinky holds up the yellow cube from before. The one Ted had unwrapped at the wedding. The bastard's box. It's Tiki's little toy box. Can't you hear yourself in there? Screaming and screaming and screaming. <laughs> Ted can hear himself. Ted can hear the screams of all those who had been born and lived and died, and yet had also never existed at all. The cries of the infinite and the impossible spill forth from the bastard's box as it slowly creaks open. Ted gazes inside, and his mind is shattered. All he can do is scream. <laughs> doing here? I told you I don't want to see you anymore. Tinky stands in the alley staring down at him. Tick tock, teddy bear. Your time's almost up. You'll be in the bastard's box real soon. Ted covers <laughs> his eyes with his hands. No! No! <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> Tinky laughs and laughs and laughs. Then silence. Slowly, Ted removes his hands from his eyes. Tinky is gone. Instead, two figures stand over him. Oh? It's Robot Emma and Paul 23, knives in their hands. You almost ruined our wedding, bastard. Stab! 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 Life leaves Ted's body. But, but don't be too sad. He still lives on, in a way. After his physical death, Ted Spankowski finds himself trapped in the twisting, impossible maze that is the bastard's box. For him, nightmare time has only just begun. Fine. Having no more use for her date, she removes a pistol from her purse and points it at him. Huh? No! Bang! She fires. The bullet tears into Ted's shoulder. Ah! 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 She shoots three more rounds. One enters his stomach, one his nuts, and one his head. He falls to the marble floor, dead. Marco, clean that up.